Kyle Erickson here. Last week I talked about the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I mentioned how I still prefer to use my Mac mini for a lot of my creative workflow. So today I decided to dive into my experience over the past year with it. And why I want to do that is because I still think that this is a beast and one of the most affordable machines out there. I have been using this thing constantly since I bought it. Uh, every morning I wake up early and I'm either on here doing research for a product, uh, editing a video or editing photos in Lightroom, uh, along with the evenings and weekends. This is my little creative space. Uh, I don't have any work stuff on here. Uh, this space is strictly for the things that I love to do in my spare time. Uh, so with that being said, I found some things that I absolutely love about this machine and some things I don't, so let's dive in. First things first, the design. Uh, I absolutely love how small this thing is. It fits nicely at the back of my desk and it barely takes up any space. It looks really sleek and I know that there are going to be some of you out there who say, Who cares what it looks like? And to that I say, I do. It's a nice neutral color. Uh, I have completely revamped this desk space over the last year. A new paint on the walls, new desktop, and new accessories, and it matches with everything. The one thing that I have not liked, however, is you do have all the ports sitting at the back of the machine, and there aren't very many of them. Now, that being said, I have never had many instances where I've needed more ports than what are available. But my biggest issue is just the placement, especially where they put the headphone jack. Uh, I wish it was off to the side at the edge of the machine a little more. Right now, it kind of sits at the bottom of the ports, right in between the two USB-A ports. And if I have something plugged into one of those USB ports, it's almost impossible to reach around the back and find the hole. Those USB-A ports are both just USB 3. They top out at five gigabits per second on transfer speed. So I usually just use those for things like my SD card reader when I'm transferring over photos or videos and they're also a bit of a pain when plugging stuff in. I wish there was some feet or a surface on the bottom of the machine that was a little bit more grippy. Having all those ports at the back, anytime you try and plug anything in, the Mac tends to slide around a lot. Uh, just a small annoyance, but something that I thought was worth mentioning. Beside those USB connections, you have an HDMI port. Uh, this is HDMI 2.0, not HDMI 2.1 that you see in a lot of new machines which is unfortunate considering the lack of ports. I have a Gigabyte G34 WQC ultrawide monitor that is capable of a 144 hertz refresh rate, but with HDMI 2.0, it caps out at 100 hertz. Now you can, however, use the USB-C ports to run your display at higher bandwidths, but if you end up doing that, you only have the one USB-C port left. Uh, you can still run a 4K monitor at 60 hertz off that HDMI port as well, so that's just something to be aware of if you're looking at a super performant monitor setup. I'm just using the HDMI port for now with the ultra wide because I also have an external SSD connected at all times for storage on this machine. When I bought my Mac mini, I decided not to spend the extra money on storage. The base machine does come with 256 gigs of storage on the internal SSD and upgrades are pretty pricey from Apple at 512 gigs for 200 and 400 for one terabyte. Uh, so definitely a little bit on the expensive side. What I ended up doing was just buying that base model and then just bumping up the RAM to 16 gigabytes and buying an external SSD as a cheaper alternative to storage, which I do have some thoughts on after a year. First thing here, this has been an entirely acceptable way to work for the majority of the time that I've owned this machine. I've been editing most of my videos and have all my project files running off this little SanDisk drive. Uh, that drive is always connected, as I've mentioned, and it sits just under my desk, so it's like it's just part of my system. Some things to be aware of though, uh, just be careful which external SSD you buy. I think a lot of these external devices are made more for casual storage needs than anything, so turning this into a drive that's constantly working generates a lot of heat. And while it is way cheaper to buy a drive like this initially, if you don't choose the right one, it can end up costing you a little bit more. I had one drive that seemed like it was dying on me, which was the Crucial X8, and I switched that to the SanDisk external drive, and it's been great. Now, I'll link it in the description below along with everything else that I use with my Mac Mini, uh, but there is one more thing to note here. The SanDisk drive that I have here is a USB 3.2 capable of 10 gigabits per second, uh, that's still a pretty quick transfer speed, 
Realistically, I get read and write speeds of around seven to 800 megabits per second, but that's nowhere near that of the internal drive. SanDisk and other manufacturers have started making external drives that run USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which is basically just another iteration of USB that runs at double the speed, but the Mac mini does not support it. So just be aware if you do buy an external drive that runs two x two, you're probably only going to get USB 3.2 speeds. The Mac mini does support Thunderbolt and USB four though. So you can't upgrade to something like this, which is a USB four enclosure that you can put an MMVE drive in. This is what I predominantly use now and you can get some really great speeds I won't go too deep into all this. I'll probably make a separate video about external drives for the next video. So if you want to check that out, just make sure that you're subscribed and it should drop shortly. The cool thing about running off of a portable SSD is I can start editing a video and if I have to go away for work or something, I can just unplug it and take it with me and finish it off on my MacBook. Uh, I did mention in my video last week that while my MacBook does render out video super fast, the Mac mini is no slouch either. Performance wise, if I'm in my workflow editing, it's really snappy. Uh, I can be in Final Cut Pro editing away and the only real slowness I ever experience is if I stack a bunch of clips or graphic overlays, which rarely ever happens. There are also some really power hungry plugins that you can get that will bog down your machine, but I rarely ever use those. And that's really the only time that I feel any slowness where this can't keep up. Render times on the M1 Pro are about twice as fast on the M1 and the Mac mini. But again, I'm fine with that because it's not really a hindrance in my actual workflow when I'm sitting at my machine trying to get something done. If you are doing any super resource heavy work, the desktop machine up from this would be the Mac Studio. My buddy Shabak has that machine and we rendered out the same files in Final Cut Pro in 8K ProRes and you can see the difference in how much faster things are rendering out on that machine. If you want to check out more on the Mac Studio, you can head over to his channel and check him out. But just speaking to the performance of the Mac Mini, uh, I'm constantly in Lightroom editing photos and Final Cut Pro editing 4K footage, and I rarely ever experience any slowness. Everything works fantastic. It's also dead silent. It does have fans that will spin up, but you really have to listen for them. My monitor actually makes more noise than the computer does, but probably a far cry from anything you're going to experience on a comparable PC. But again, PCs do have other advantages if you're considering gaming or anything like that, which this machine and probably any other Mac isn't great for. I've been able to fire up Visual Studio Code and Xcode to do some more development related work without any issues. Uh, on this machine, it's mostly for fun, playing around building out UIs and stuff like that, drawing up wireframes and visuals through Affinity Designer and Figma and so on, and then codifying them. While most of that stuff has just been fun prototyping stuff, I was at one point using the MacBook Air M1 for a full-time development machine with some apps that were pretty power hungry, and it also worked just fine. So I'm sure this would behave the same as well. Beyond the performance, one thing I do want to mention is the speakers aren't anything to write home about in here. Honestly, I think it would have made sense if they just shipped these without them. It sounds like it's built out of a tin can. I've always rocked external speakers or headphones. Lately, I've been just using my headphones directly connected to the Mac mini while I wait for some speakers that match my setup to come back in stock. Uh, but that internal speaker is really the only thing that's truly disappointing about this machine. One year later, I'm still using this machine every day. Uh, sure, there are things about it that could be better. Uh, the ports could be improved. There should probably be more of them. It would be nice if they did offer a little bit higher transfer speeds as well and supported more protocols, but this thing is only $700. And when you look around at what's available for around $700, it's pretty hard to beat the Mac mini. It's been amazing for me so far, and I think that you'll be hard pressed to find better value in a machine. I could probably talk about this for another hour. Uh, I know I'm not covering everything here, but if you would like to know anything else about this machine, drop a comment down below. Or if you'd just like to say hi and let me know how your day's going. Click the thumbs up if this video was at all entertaining. Subscribe if you feel like we have a special connection. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you around the YouTubes.